Good morning students. Today I am going to explain you the first chapter in chemistry. Matter in our surroundings. Keep the textbook in front of you because we have number of activities in this chapter. Coming to this chapter, everything in this universe is made up of materials which scientists name as matter. So what is matter? Anything that has mass and occupies space is called matter. And what is the meaning of mass? Mass means amount of matter present in an object. So what is matter? Anything that has mass and occupies space is called matter. For example, air we breathe, food we eat, plants, animals, even a small drop of water or particles of sand, everything is matter. Indian philosophers classified matter in the form of five basic elements. Panchatattva that is air, earth, fire, sky and water and according to them anything living or non-living was made up of these five basic elements and modern day scientists have evolved two types of classification of matter based on physical properties and chemical nature and in this chapter we are basically going to learn about matter based on its physical properties so the first topic matter is made up of particles and for a long time two schools of thought prevailed regarding the nature of matter one school believed that the matter is continuous like a block of wood and other school believed that the matter was made up of separate particles like sand now let us perform an activity to decide the nature of matter whether it is continuous or separate and now i am going to explain you the activity 1.1 first take 100 ml of water in a beaker okay and mark the level of water and dissolve some salt or sugar with the help of a glass rod and observe any change in water level so they are asking us some questions let us see what do you think has happened to the salt what will happen to the salt we know the salt dissolves in water and second question where does it disappear the salt particles get into space between water particles and next question does the level of water change there is no change in water level and by conducting this activity what we have to understand is matter is made of tiny particles by conducting this activity we can say that the matter is made of tiny particles and next topic how small are these particles of matter? So how small they are? For that we need to conduct one more activity. Activity 1.2 First, take 2 to 3 crystals of potassium permanganate and dissolve them in 100 ml of water. Next, take out approximately 10 ml of this solution and put it into 90 ml of clear water then again take 10 ml of this solution and put it into another 90 ml of clear water 
so in this manner keep diluting the solution for 5 to 8 times and he is asking us a question at last is the water still colored so what is the answer yes the water remains colored till the last dilution so by performing this activity what we can conclude we can say that there must be millions of tiny particles in just one crystal of potassium permanganate which keep on dividing themselves into smaller and smaller particles so we can say the particles of matter are very small they are small beyond our imagination and next what are the characteristics of particles of matter first particles of matter have space between them means between the particles of matter you will find there will be some space and next the particles of matter are very small they are small beyond our imagination means they are very very tiny and next particles of matter attracts each other and next the particles of matter move continuously and next do the particles of matter have space between them in activities 1.1 and 1.2 till now we have performed these activities so we can say that particles of sugar salt or potassium permanganate got evenly distributed in water so the particles of one type of matter get into the spaces between particles of other this shows that there is enough space between particles of matter and the next topic is do the particles of matter are continuously moving to show that we need to conduct some activities now we are going with activity 1.3 in this activity first what we have to do is put an unlit incense stick means don't light that incense stick put an unlit incense stick in a corner of your class and how close do you have to go near it so as to get its smell means we need to go quite close to the incense stick to get its smell and next he is asking as to now light the incense stick what happens do you get the smell sitting at a distance now the smell of the incense stick can be felt even sitting at a distance because when you light so mostly what happens the particles of the gas will mix up in the air right and next he is asking to record your observations so by conducting this activity what we have to understand is we can say that the particles of gas and air mixture are continuously moving okay and next he is asking us to perform one more activity activity 1.4 first take two glasses or beakers filled with water and next put a drop of blue or red ink slowly and carefully in the first beaker and honey in the second beaker so in the first beaker you need to add blue or red color ink and in the second beaker you have to drop honey and leave them undisturbed for some time and record your observation so leave this experimental setup for some time without disturbing and after some time try to observe them and again he is asking some questions so we will see these questions now what do you observe immediately after adding the ink drop 
so what will you observe after adding the ink drop so we will find that the color of ink start spreading soon next question what do you observe immediately after adding a drop of honey so when you will add a drop of honey then what we will find you will find the honey slowly dissolves in water and next question how many hours or days does it take for the color of ink to spread evenly throughout water how many hours it will take it will not take so much time just within a few minutes the ink will dissolve in the beaker with the water okay and next we have to perform one more activity activity number 1.5 so in this activity first you need to take a drop of crystal of copper sulfate or potassium permanganate into a glass of hot water and another containing cold water do not stir the solution and allow the crystals to settle at the bottom so just you are taking the crystals of copper sulfate into and you are adding it into hot water a beaker containing hot water and a beaker containing cold water and just you need to observe them that's it and he is asking some questions again what do you observe just above the solid crystal in the glass so what will happen to that solid crystals when you will put them in the beaker the solid crystals of potassium permanganate starts diffusing so what is diffusion diffusion means the intermixing of the molecules is called as diffusion okay and next question what happens as time passes as time passes particles of solid diffuses throughout the water so within short span of time the solid particles completely they get mixed up in the water and next question what does this suggest about the particles of solid and liquid means particles of solid and liquid mix into each other and next question does the rate of mixing change with temperature why and how so what is the answer the mixing increases with temperature because the kinetic energy of particles increases with temperature and after conducting these three activities actually why did we conduct these three activities and what is our observation means we observe that particles of matter intermix on their own with each other by getting into the spaces between the particles and this intermixing of particles of two different types of matter on their own is called diffusion that is the definition of diffusion the intermixing of particles of two different types of matter on their own is called diffusion and we can observe that on heating diffusion becomes faster because upon increasing the temperature the kinetic energy of particles increases and particles start moving with high speed and intermix rapidly okay and in the next class we will learn about the particles of matter attract each other okay